I think that that's kind of what struck me about alchemy and reading it is, you know, this idea that we want humans want to be logic or we think we're more logical than we are. Maybe is a better yeah. way to put it. So especially when we... uh, by the way, it's very, it's very easy to, we're very good at post rationalizing mm. and we can nearly always tell a plausible story about why we did something in the past. Right. And as a result, I think because we're very good at post rationalizing and constructing a fairly straightforward narrative from our past, we mistakenly think it's similarly easy to construct the same narrative about the future. Mm. Whereas, of course, the future, we have a view of the past, which is much more deterministic than it really was at the time. Right. We see things as being inevitable when they weren't, for example. Mm. We see things as the product of intention, conscious intention, when they weren't. Right. And then what we tend to do is project that forward into the future, which I think is 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 a fundamental mistake right can you give an example of this maybe that you've seen in your work like what what's a what's a mistake maybe that you've witnessed where you know we we assume the you know the quote-unquote logical route is the way to go but then you see in hindsight maybe it was incorrect one thing i noticed which I, it helps to be old and this this features quite heavily in the book mm. is the fact that an enormous number of very very successful businesses and business sectors and i would include say starbucks five guys actually you go back to mcdonald's although i obviously don't predate mcdonald's <laughs> dyson mm. okay it would be impossible to construct in advance of their existence, a rational case for their creation. Red Bull is the other example. Mm, yeah, I love you that know, story. If you, th if you think about it, you know, it's, a, it's an expensive drink in a tiny can, which tastes kind of disgusting. <laughs> okay, right. no person who required logical support for any investment or any uh, new product development, no large corporation could have created Red Bull, in fact, because it defies rational justification and, and pre-existing evidence mm. to too great an extent. Right. But what I think often happens is there's a kind of Darwinian market process where some products, I sometimes I think intentionally through the genius of their creator, but possibly more often simply through good fortune, simply happen to satisfy an unmet need mm. on the part of customers. Yeah. And it's often an unmet need because it's unthought and unspoken. Right. But once satisfied, the idea that you can, either using market research or economic models or logical models, the idea that you can necessarily tell what people want in advance is pretty unsafe. I mean, I was to give the example of Dyson, which is there was absolutely nobody in 1995 going around going, why isn't there a 700 pound vacuum cleaner? Right. You know, a 700, $800 vacuum cleaner. Mm. If someone had come to me with that idea, I would have given them five reasons why it was a very silly idea. You know, it's a distress purchase. You only buy a vacuum cleaner when you have to. Right. You know, nobody has suggested that, uh, you, you know, vacuum cleaners be up belong in the field of treats or luxury right. goods up until dyson accidentally i think stumbled on that mm. most people who could afford an 800 pound vacuum cleaner may not even over their own homes right there was no evidence in the marketplace that there was any gap in the market you know if you looked at the kind of normal distribution of vacuum cleaner expenditure it would have centered around about the 150 200 dollar mark i guess right with Miele at the top and various things at the bottom right so why do you think Dyson worked? Why did it work? Well, I'll be absolutely candid. Uh, he thinks probably, he may not, I don't know. In fairness to him, he's both an engineer, but he is also a devotee of design. Mm. Uh, one of the reasons I think is that it's transparent. I don't think it's the baglessness. The baglessness, if anything, is a mild disadvantage mm. because one thing about vacuum cleaner bags is they're very easy to empty and dispose of right. compared to a vacuum cleaner where you have to tip the contents into a bin. Mm. I think I, I think the fact that it looked unbelievably cool mm. contributed. I also think the fact that it's transparent, there is something inherently satisfying about seeing the dirt that it collects in real time. Right. That makes sense. You know, you're you're less keen in the United States on front loading washing machines, aren't you? You tend to have top loaders. Yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, the sort of you know, big Maytag thing with a vertical, effectively a, a, a drum which rotates around a vertical axis. In Europe, because our washing machines tend to go in kitchens underneath the work surface, they're front loading and they tend to have a glass door. Mm. 
And, you know, those things, seemingly trivial things, may play a much greater part in preference than we ever admit. Right. You know, right. the fact that you can watch your washing as it goes through the wash cycle, spin cycle, yes. may just make you mu derive much more satisfaction for the activity than having a metal door, which is a pain. Right, where you can't see what's happening. It feels like... Uh, what, 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 the way I often refer to this is that there are, in, in the case of many products, there's an official reason why we buy them. Mm. And it's a bit like JP Morgan's comment that for anything people do, there are two reasons. Uh, there's a good reason and there's the real reason. <laughs> right, and yeah. I, often, you know, I often say that the real reason people clean their teeth is really vanity and, and fear of bad breath, right. much more than it is fear of dental decay. Mm. That's why all toothpaste is flavored with mint. You know, even though a lot of people don't actually like mint, right. it does a great job of making your mouth feel fresh and unsmelly. Mm. Uh, in the same way, I, I, I had a sort of riff with Nassim Taleb about this. You know, the reason people buy a dishwasher is not so much to wash their plates and knives, it's to, uh, to have a place to put dirty crockery out of sight. Okay. <laughs> you know, the real value of a dishwasher isn't necessarily what it does while it's turned on. It's also what it does while it's turned off. Hmm. And then the other joke was, you know, the reason you buy a swimming pool is not necessarily to swim in. It's because if you own a swimming pool, you have a license to walk around your garden in a bathing costume in the summer without feeling like an idiot. <laughs> Yes, okay. I like it. So, you know, yeah. it, it, you know, there are an awful lot of things which fascinate me. Uh, you know, I keep wondering, no one has quite created an ice cream that you can take into the office, have they? They have not. Not yet. 